G'day, I'm Greg, and welcome to Rev Shed Performance. Today we're going to talk about the difference between an American 4V closed chamber head and the Australian 2V closed chamber head for the Ford Cleveland. Um, being in Australia, I've seen a lot of the uh, a lot of the Australian closed chamber heads, and not a lot of the American ones because uh, simply we didn't get a lot here. But uh, we'll go through the uh, the obvious differences. We're not going to go real deep into the absolute idiosyncrasies between them all, but you're going to get enough of an idea and enough of an overview that when you look at the two heads, you'll be able to go, that's Aussie, that's America, this is where one's good, this is where the other's good. And before we, everyone starts talking about how the four Vs are too big and they don't flow, or when I say they don't flow, they don't have port velocity, I'll do another video on that because I have a very different opinion on the 4V head and why it is probably one of the worst understood heads around. That's not saying the port velocity is not important, but what I'm saying is that most people build engines incorrectly when they're using 4V heads. But that's a separate video. I'll pause you now, I'll bring you in, um, and we'll start talking about the different heads and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see um, enough of a difference that you can easily recognise the differences between the two heads regardless of how they're sitting. Okay, here we have a D1AE um, 4V head and here we have an ARD 1AE Australian 302 head. That'd be right, I'll put the uh, torch down somewhere, I can't remember where I'll put it. Here we go. Okay. Both these heads are in about the same condition. The machining marks are about the same. This one here has had a little bit more off it by the looks of it. Um, probably only a 20th hour. So this one here I actually had float on a Superflow 600, that's the 4V. Australian Standard Certified Bench, so we know exactly what this one flows. This one here, that's the port that I actually flowed on the um, Poor Man's Flow Bench series. So if you haven't had a look at that, um, go back, have a look at that. You'll find out the actual flow figures on this. To start with, this is a template that I cut here for the 4V combustion chamber. This is the... Actually, we'll go to the same, same cylinder. Hopefully it's in shot. Okay. So what you can see here is the extra compression. These are normally a 58cc or down to a 58cc. They're always bigger than that. They're probably 62, 63. These are, by memory, these are meant to be a 64. But I think most of the time they CC out about 67. But the actual exact numbers are irrelevant at the moment because what we're doing is we're looking at the distance, the differences in where the metal is. So what you'll see here is that notice behind the spark plug, and these use the same spark plug too, by the way, that behind the spark plug on the 4V, this is all open. And on the Aussie head, it's all closed in. You'll also notice in here that it opens up and runs away where on the Aussie 2V, it hangs in around the back of the exhaust valve a lot more. Um, we'll turn this head, these heads around in a bit and give you a closer look at the intake side of the combustion chamber, but we're just looking at the exhaust side. Um, when we get back to here, you'll notice that the differences on the intake manifold side of the head is not great. It's very close. The Australian head, this is a 2.05 intake, 1.6, 2.05, 1.65 exhaust by memory. Um, 
but to give you an example the 2.919 2.05 intake the difference hopefully it's in focus is that much the 1.71 1.65 exhaust the difference yeah it's not much you can just see that little lip around there hopefully you can see it in, in what you're looking at um, as far as I can tell as far as I'm aware these are both genuine Ford valves that's a genuine Ford that's a genuine Ford so they're all factory valves all right now what we will do um, is we'll spin them around and we'll have a look at the difference on the intake side of the chamber so put our template back on again I'll get it in the right spot ah. okay on the intake side you'll see the difference in here. Notice how the 4V head ramps up in this area from the intake valve where on the Aussie head it's pretty much straight up. Um, I was just looking for a pointer. So this here is actually straight up where this one here is on quite an angle. So a lot more concentrated in the area of the combustion chamber now. I've run these with flat top pistons and m measured static compression ratios as high as 13.8 to 1. I've had pistons sticking out of a block. Um, yeah. And the... You don't want to put too much initial... You don't want to put too much total advance in. And yet I've run 16 and 18 degrees of initial because I've had so much cam in it. So... Uh, yeah, you can actually uh, run a. You can actually run quite a bit of compression if you have enough camshaft. But again, that gets back to dynamic compression ratio, and I'm talking on pump fuels too. Back in the day, um, leaded super fuel that we used to get here in Australia. And what we'll do is we'll talk about dynamic compression versus static compression ratios as well. So what we'll do here is we'll turn these two heads up. We'll look at the intake. <clears throat> this actually video came about from a discussion on the forum. You can tell this is a head that I have worked on in previous history because this crossover, the EGR port, the preheat port, whatever you want to call it, depending on what it was used on, uh, what carburetor it was used with, and what series of emission it was used with. I've blocked this with Celastic. That's right, silicon. You shoot it full of silicon, and what it does is it burns the backside of the silicon, turns it into carbon, and from then on, you get no gas flow through the port. Really quick, really cheap, really easy. You don't need to cut anything. You don't need. No, it's all too hard. Just shoot it full of like, good old fashioned silastic. Works every time. Now, this is the adapter off the poor man's flow bench. Um, so, what we will do. Hopefully you can see that I've got to have a look. Yeah, okay. So you can see that. Let's turn it around. Let's turn it around. Right so this is cut for the 4V head at the moment. So now we'll move to the same port on the 2V. And you will see that... One side lines up and the extra area is around the bottom and the side, one side of the port. So back in the day, they reckoned if you put a 4V intake manifold on the 2V heads, it was worth 30 horsepower, despite the port mismatch. Um, I've never done it, never uh, say never done it. I've never done it and dynoed it. Um, but when you're going from a two barrel carburetor to a four barrel carburetor, you're probably going to get some advantages. Uh, and again, there's 
couple of I have an interesting theory about the like, the design mentality behind the 4V head, which I think most people have overlooked. So we've got that difference there. Uh, the other thing that I'll point out is notice how little metal we have up the top here. We've got yeah, probably about half an inch, 12 mil. We're here, we pro we're probably getting close to three quarters of an inch, 20 mil. Uh, the, these castings are different in the side here. You will notice that the Aussie casting is quite square, the 4V is quite rounded. So uh, that will help you identify these heads when you are looking at them. We will flip over now and have a look at the exhaust side. Because often that's the side you can see when you're just looking at a set of heads on a motor. Right. By the way, this 2V head is not ported. So again, we get back to the poor man's flow bench, arrow up. The bolt pattern between a 2V and a 4V is exactly the same. And you'll notice that the left-hand side of the port as you view it and the top of the port matches on the 2V. It is only the right-hand side of the port and the bottom of the port that mismatches. So we'll go to the 4V, we'll put it on the 4V, and you can see that I ported this to match. So in answer to your question, people, yes, you can put 4V headers, 4V extractors, 4V manifolds on 2V heads. The bolt pattern is the same. Now, another piece of wisdom. Many years ago, actually, I'm looking at this, this has got Celastic on it, so it is quite probable that I'll put exhaust on this one as well. Um, the, yeah, this is elastic. Okay, I stopped using gaskets when I ran cast iron heads and headers or extractors, whatever you want to call them, wherever you are in the world, try wise, um, which are different again. But what I did, what I do is I put a bead of silicon on the head or on the uh, what I'm bolting on, and I just bolt it up, mate. Ford never ran gaskets in Australia anyway, between the cast iron head and the cast iron manifolds. And we didn't use it, we didn't have problems with leaks. So what I do now, what I've done for 40 plus years, 45 years, is I have only ever used silicon. Because the moment I did that, all my gasket problems went away. Uh, you can't do it with aluminum heads because of the differences in expansion. But still, Notice how thick the, we are here as to the very similar up here. The 4V is thinner across the top, but not by a great deal. We're only talking yeah, sixteenth of an inch or you know, two and a half mil, something like that. We're not going to bother about measuring it exactly. Um, we'll probably do another video later on about the differences in port dimensions because we're only talking about identifying the differences in the heads at the moment. So you've got, we've done intake, this face, that face, uh, intake exhaust face. We will now look at the top side of the heads. The Core plug, the screwing core plugs for getting the casting sand out are in the same position. You'll notice that this one here is sitting up higher in a couple of spots, no big deal. The valve angles, I believe, are exactly the same. We've got slight differences here in the ports in as much as that the 2V is slightly deeper than what the 4V is. Um, Nothing really stands out there, but the real difference is going to show up in a minute when I stand them up on end. 
because oh, no. notice the American head is all closed in through here where with the Australian head the Aussie head we're all open we're here on the American head we're not and we're talking American cast head now I'm going to just see if you can see what I'm looking at oh. you couldn't see what I was looking at okay sorry guys We'll come back and we'll shoot. We're shooting this again. The American head is all closed in through here. The Aussie head is all open through here. I can put my fingers through from one side, and you can see my fingers. Where I, obviously I can't do it on the uh, on the four V head. Also on the end of the head we have. Two bolts that are common we have two bolts that are common but the 4v has an extra bolt hole in here that we don't have on the aussie head and we'll flip this over so we're at the other end and we'll flip this one over so that we're at the other end and we have a difference in the castings here you can see one bolt hole and a ridge, one bolt hole, no provision here for this flat surface. Oh, actually, we've got two bolt holes. So that we could put that bolt hole in, but we don't have a flat surface here. So there's a basic quick overview of a couple of differences between the two heads. Um, and hopefully you can really see the differences here in the combustion chamber between the Aussie 2V here and the 4V. All returns are, for all intents and purposes are exactly the same. Um, there's a couple of different variations of this head um, which we'll probably go into later and I'll show you uh, on a different head. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and uh, I hope you get something out of this and you can look forward to the next video in the series uh, which is probably going to be a cut up and section one of these heads which is sitting behind uh, the camera at the moment so I'll probably shoot that one pretty much straight away.